I heard voices in the engine's rattling noise. Crickstone Road. It was finally my stop. I opened my eyes and hurried to the exit. As soon as I got off the bus, I took the old Polaroid photo of my pocket and started to walk along the path. I had to find Aunt Harry's house using the photo taken six years ago. It was an easy task, I must say. No one cared enough to drown my map. How could my dad draw it for me without his very important responsibilities? Like going through the jewelry catalog to pick another diamond ring for my stepmother. So I guess was the old photo taken when my mother and father visited our palace. By the way, my father had to prove how much he loved Sophia almost every week. And the prices of the presents were increasing rapidly. This is exactly the reason why I didn't get a new bike for my last birthday. My father just patted me on the shoulder and gave me five bucks to get something for myself. I think my stepmother is pure evil. She might be the evilest evil in the entire universe. And I know that my mom was smiling at me from the photo with a grin. Her smile was so warm and pleasant. I liked the cold grin of my stepmother. I swear that when I see her putting the meat in the grinder while watching me with her little sparkling eyes, I sometimes feel like my life is in danger. But now I'm far away and she can't touch me with her long, pale fingers. I've been here once, when I was little. My mother brought me with her to see her sister. At the time, everything seemed so dreamlike and unreal to me. My aunt's house truly was a magical place, full of miracles. Of course, since I was just a kid, I was imagining things. Still, I had a lot of fun during my stay. It didn't really matter if it was only a fantasy because I was having a good time there. Gosh, I'm really glad that I left that stuff in bus and was finally able to get some fresh air. I couldn't wait to see the place from my childhood. I wonder if I could imagine something magical now. I walked along a narrow path covered in leaves. It was so nice to walk in the woods with pleasant chill. The sun was pouring with bright colors from the sky, drawing interesting patterns of thick branches. Magnificent fir trees were surrounding me and the birds were singing their beautiful songs merrily. This warm out of air lifted my spirits and I couldn't help but smile. It was so pleasant to walk through the forest in peace and quiet, especially after living in a noisy city for so long. Not so much of a wilderness after all, and the village must be close to my aunt's house. Last time, my parents and I went there to see the toy of hair. <laughs> My stupid stepmother probably thought she was sending me to live in some kind of a dump, but fortunately, it wasn't so bad. Maybe I can even make friends with the guys from the village. Some part of me would like to fall lazily on the sofa and turn on the comedy show with Jay Earl, but I felt that something interesting and huge was waiting for me. A strange feeling for a 12 year old boy who was just kicked out of the house by a grumpy stepmother. By the way, she herself should sometime get out of the city to enjoy the fresh air instead of sitting there all day. She's always at home or at work. That's probably why she's so pale and constantly complaining about everything to my dad. For a split second, I paused and asked myself why I ever thought that Aunt Alice would be happy to see me in the first place. Could she suddenly change, grow old and become just as grumpy as my stepmother? During my last day, my auntie and I seemed to get along well and we had a lot of fun together. But who knows what was going on in the minds of these adults. Suddenly I felt my tummy rumbling. The last time I ate was early in the morning. I was given just a couple of apples for the road. The last one was now in my pocket. Groping for a round green apple, I slowly took it out and bit off a decent piece. Ugh, it's sore, sore. I was so surprised that it wasn't poisoned after all, since it was my stepfather who gave it to me. What the hell? Is this no white? What a nasty woman! But at least she wasn't here, so I didn't need to listen to her endless comments and complaints. Sit straight, Thomas. You eat like a savage. I was off the table. Stop now in the pen. My war with her was over for now. But I was a little worried what would happen to my father. I guess his relationship wasn't bad. He didn't have to fear to be tortured with sour apples. Suddenly I smelled something. Came from the depths of the forest. I breathed in deeper, and the pleasant aromas of cinnamon and bold condensed milk tickled my nose. How appetizing! The aroma of baked goods coming from behind the trees was so inviting that it turned me into a predator stalking prey. And even though my hunger was still for now, I wanted to try on cooking. 
even feel the taste of something sweet in my mouth. God, it smells good. This is working out pretty well so far. I could have been sent to the Evergreen boarding school for boys, from which, according to rumors, Noah had ever returned. And the guys at school were telling such frightening stories about this terrible place that it almost turned into one of the most disturbing urban legends. Jesus, that's a lot of exposition going on here. Chasing this pleasant smell, I found myself on a clearing. Chasing this. Uh, okay, where well, is that repeating? In the distance, there was a cliff, and judging by the photo, the house should be right there, but it wasn't. Not believing my eyes, I took a few steps forward, looking carefully at the photo. That's right, the house should be here. Suddenly, I saw it. I saw the outline of a house standing on the very edge of the cliff. It seemed to have emerged from the air. What a funny picture! Looks like it had been chased there by all these sharp fir trees, but it jump didn't jump off the cliff anyway. My imagination sometimes likes to play games. Why didn't I notice it at once? Smoke poured from the chimney and a delicious smell came out of the windows. It seemed I wasn't mistaken, and a great dinner was waiting for me. I didn't, have time come I didn't even have time to come up to the porch as the door suddenly swung home at. A black cat with a cookie between its teeth jumped out of the house. Uh, it was fired by my aunt Alice riding a broomstick. A broomstick! Colorful sparks were shooting from her hands. What's going on here? I couldn't believe my own eyes. I merely wanted to run away, hoping to catch up with the bus. But at the same time, I felt like clapping my hands with some strange joy. My aunt laughed so wickedly and viciously that a cold chill ran down my back. You ate, my all, you ate all my cookies, rascal. I'll skin you alive. Just wait till I get my hands on you. Skin alive? Auntie began to chase the cat around the house, firing colorful sparks at him. Various luminous figures appeared around my aunt every now and then, and I look at it spellbound. Finally, common sense took over. Of course, this is just a dream. I probably does off during the trip. A purple glowing blow from my head, charming with bright sparks. My the storms immediately collapsed and I opened my mouth again in surprise. No, no, this couldn't be true. It just couldn't. My common sense continued to fight, but it was obviously losing. This is just crazy. I jumped to the place where the glowing bow fell and touched the burnt grass. God, it's hot. Damn it, is this really true? Are you kidding me? My aunt continued to rush for the cat around the house, time after time flying over the gulf. How is that even possible? Can it be? Magic! Meanwhile, the cat ran around the house numerous times, but suddenly he changed direction, rushing towards me. I stood still like a statue. In the blink of an eye, this long-tailed creature climbed upon me. I see you found yourself a shelter, rascal. Get down, Thomas. What? Next time you get yourself under control, Grimoire. My aunt aimed her fingers at my head, and a red spark flew out of it. See you! Meow! With a powerful flow of magic, I sent the cat in the depths of the forest, and a fluffy bow disappeared in the leaves. I could have died! You almost killed me! No need to worry, since you are alive. And how could I ever kill my adorable nephew? She beamed at me and came closer, as if nothing had happened. It's been ages! How I've missed you, Thomas! I couldn't get over what I just saw. I won't have been so tired that I almost lost the ability to perceive reality along with the ability to breathe. Auntie, what on earth just happened? That was the most impudent cat on the whole planet if you're talking about Grimoire, of course. I'm talking about all those sparks, that broom. Ah, that's nothing. Witch stuff. Witch stuff? I struggled to suppress a cry of delight. Meanwhile, Alice began to examine me. You've become thinner since our last meeting. This nasty Sophia doesn't give you any food? Who cares, auntie? That was incredible! Why is this such a surprise for you? Didn't your dad tell you I'm a witch? Well, he said... But this is... Hmm? This is real magic, damn it! Watch your tongue, young man! But it's really great that you liked it. How are you feeling? The barrier might have taken some power from me when you were getting through it. Is it because of magic that I see the house from a distance? Right you are! The house is not visible to those who are not looking for it. And if you're looking for it, it immediately show up when you come closer. That's how it is. She smiled again. She smelled kind of familiar. I think it's my mom's perfume. Yes, your mom and I had similar taste for lots of things, but unfortunately not for men. She grinned and 
excited. It just so happened that my boyfriend turned out to be a piece of work and I just had to turn him into a cat. Now he's my pet though. My. <laughs> really. Wow. Don't tell me that it was your boyfriend who was just sitting on my head. She nodded. Opened my mouth even wider in surprise. She turned her boyfriend into a cat? Wow. But well, on the other hand, I should calm down. What if she turned me into a bug or a mouse if I put my hands to the table or forgot to make my bed? Oh. Auntie put her hand on my shoulder, interrupting my disturbing thoughts. Don't worry, Thomas. I won't hurt you. I'm a good witch, and besides, this grimoire continues to annoy me even when being a cat. So I didn't give him a tail for nothing. This fluffy bag devoured all the cookies I had baked for your arrival. You might not understand now, but sometimes a girl just has to turn a nasty boyfriend into an animal of some kind. I just nodded. Relationships are not my thing at all. Well, I'm only 12. Okay. But if one of the girls in my school told a friend that she had turned a guy into a cat, the next day she would be locked in a cuckoo house. Just imagine, flying brooms and cats that once were people. I wonder what was going on to happen next. I still can't believe that this is real magic. Of course it's real. There's no other. It was very difficult to believe what was happening, especially the part where auntie claimed to have turned her boyfriend into a cat. You don't have to. Really? I have to repeat that shit. But no matter how crazy it sounded, it seemed to be on the truth. This is great! Well, except for the cat thing. I think I would like your place. No doubt about that. It's getting colder. We should get inside. I'll give you some cold tea. Okay! She walked quickly towards the cows. I looked back at the forest. What about Grimoire? Hurry up, Thomas. I don't want you to get cold. And don't worry about this rascal. It will be alright. He always finds his way home. We went inside the house and I found myself in a pretty spacious hallway with a huge sofa stretching along the wall. There were some pictures on the wall and a doofy wolf skin under the sofa. In horror I started this monster which seemed like it had just crawled from under a child's bed, like some kind of furry boogeyman. Welcome to the witch's house. You're very cute in here, auntie. He says in a cheerful voice, still looking at the shaggy monster onto the sofa. Thank you. Try to tidy up for your arrival. I removed dried mice and all the rubbish that was hanging here for years. I want you to feel at home. With difficult, I pried my eyes away from the monster on the floor and looked at my aunt. I don't know where you. I don't know you were expecting me. Auntie put the broom against the wall and smiled at me. Your father told me you weren't getting along with your stepmother, and I suggested that you should come and stay at my place. He agreed. The woman, Sophia, has completely clouded his mind. And what he told me I realized that she was pure evil. So I told her on purpose that I urgently needed a servant to keep the house clean. She immediately suggested that I should take you and began to describe you as an extremely diligent worker. You would clean the dust, the furniture, and would be afraid the dust, the furniture, and wouldn't be afraid of any work, and so on. Uh what a devilish woman. Apparently she wants you to live in the worst place place possible. This is why I told her that hell on earth awaits you right here. She was so happy as if she had won a million bucks in the lottery and said that she would send you on the first bus tomorrow. Sophia is really cruel. I think that she is not a human at all but some kind of beast. Maybe I should put her in my creature book archive. Sophia, a dem, a demon eating little boy's good mood. Check out, I almost said it in Bulgarian. <laughs> She sure is. By the way, how old are you? I recently turned 12. A bona fide shorter. Whoa, you're not a little boy anymore. Well, most likely. I'm just not as naive as before. She slightly pushed me with her elbow. What kind of lucky girl stole the half such a handsome boy? Oh boy. I blushed a bit. I think it's still too early for that. For now, I'm mostly interested in books. Ah, so we have a wonderkin here. Good news. Take your time to look around while I put some more cookies in the oven or I have nothing to treat you with. That damn cat has devoured it all. My aunt walked straight into the adjacent room. I threw off my backpack, popped my glasses and looked around. Prop my glasses, not pop, sorry. There were lots of brooms here and I noticed that they had different handles. Some had thick and crooked sticks, others were straight and thin. 
I was in a good mood and just for fun I grabbed the closed broom and mounted it as it was as if I was flying on the broomstick. Then I took one of the hats and put it on my head. Look Andy, I look like a real sorcerer. Ha 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 ha. What is it, Thomas? The voice came from afar. Judging by the noise coming from the room, she must have been busy in the kitchen. What kind of joke is this, you wretched boy? Standing from somewhere above, and jumped on the spot. The hat flew off my head to the floor and looked at me accusingly. Surprised, it dropped the broom. Uh, auntie? The sound of quick steps could be heard. Oh dear, Thomas, what were you thinking? She abruptly ran up to me, picked up the broom and the hat. So sorry, Madame Bonwright. Auntie whooped the hat carefully and hanging on the hook. Oh boy, I think. Been here for years now and I have never seen such impudence. What a naughty boy. Who is this brazen fool, Alice? This is my nephew, Thomas. I was staring at the hat in total disbelief. My mind simply refused to understand things. I need to urgently discipline this boy, Alice. This wicked, dissolent boy is bad news. As your deceased mother and my mistress always said, rules are the most important part of education. Bonwright grinned quite satisfied. You see, even your hat has been has better manners than this young man. It's good that you remember it too, Ignati Petrovich. I don't have a chance to forget, you repeated a hundred times, madam. You should raise your voice at me, you know. She suddenly snored. Alice pointed her wand, which seemed to have appeared from thin air from the hat, and sighed it in relief. It's not poli polite to interrupt like this, but if she gets started, she will never stop. Yes, this old bag has completely gone nuts. Let me introduce myself, lad. My name is Ignati Petrovich. This hat, I cannot believe it's talking. And this fellow guy doesn't know where hats come from. Right, Alice? Auntie nodded. No, he knows nothing about our world. Which hats are woven in special magic workshops, most often from living thread, and they get their names from their creators. I had Russian roots, so he called me after his eldest son. It's very simple, Thomas. Well, I see. It's very simple. Auntie smirk. Is it really? No, not at all. And what kind of explanation was this? What kind of life thread? What special workshops? You talk to me like if I knew about this kind of stuff. I had thought for a while. Mm. Changing by your facial expression, you didn't understand a damn thing. Well, let me ask you. Where do you think a person's souls come from? Its existence has not yet been proven. I responded readily. The question was simple enough and any could, could answer. Really? 12 year old answering that <laughs> question then. That's the same thing here. It's not clear how everything works. Some magicians believe that the souls of the dead live in the hats. Others think that they are the souls of the unborn. Pick any version you like and it will be alright. Anyway, Nothing will change. I myself am not a supporter of any of these arcane theories. I prefer real science. Shall we practice philosophy some t other time, please? Thomas and I need to look around the house, and you, Igni, should be engaged in composing a new catalog for my potion shop. Wow, you have got your own store? That's right, that's right. I like it so much, I love numbers, but to be honest, Alice is such a bummer that we don't have much profit from this business. And we have to pay rent in that village. Firstly, this is not a shop but a store. Secondly, it's not yours, Igni, but mine. And thirdly, I've got a lot of nice private orders recently. Thomas, things are getting better. Ha 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 ha, don't listen to this nonsense, lad. Alice's business is weak, although we are trying to hold on. Thanks to me, of course. It was my idea to open a shop in the first place. Hey, Igni. Oh, you arrogant old fool. You're getting on well with Auntie Ignati Petrovich. Please call me Igni, my young friend. And now I need to have a nap. Put me back on the hook, Alice. I still have a lot of work to do, but I need to have some rest first. Auntie mumbled something to herself. Then she took off her hat and put it on peg next to the other hats and looked at me again. Well, back to basics. The home of witches is inhabited by a lot of talking things, Thomas. Not only hats can be alive, we should be more careful. This one is not a regular house. Any object can be dangerous in some way or another. You can't just touch everything you wish if you want to keep all your limbs. We're really lucky to pick a regular broom for your jokes. Not a real wish broom. I know that. 
my hands were still shaking. Killer brooms, talking killer brooms, talking hats, some nut house. And she put her hand on my shoulder. There are a lot of dangerous things in this house, but isn't that wonderful? The uncertainty of tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that I would want to still be alive tomorrow. Well, in that case, you should be most careful, my dear nephew. Sure thing. Oh, this is so incredible. The truth is, from what my father told me, I thought we were some kind of charlatan or phys psychic, but not a real witch. I can see physical that with them. She ruffled my hair. Now, if you call me a charlatan, I could turn you into a bug. After all, I have a license for magic. Here, take a look. She pulled out a chain around her neck, which was hidden behind a high collar, and took out a magic amulet. Alice ran her finger on the edge of the amulet, and it opened, shining brightly. An inscription appeared in the air. Alice McFlurry, which potion maker and chairman since 1974. Then the amulet closed. It still looked very magical and amazing, but nothing could be the talking hat. And yet, I was shocked and almost collapsed. It was way too much for me. I started to fall over. Uh, but my aunt caught me by the hand. Easy, Thomas. Everything will be fine. You just need to get used to magic. Don't touch the brooms. They are very dangerous creatures. This joke of yours. You're lucky that you didn't mount the witch's broom. I just wanted to make a joke. I'm sorry. I'm not mad at you, but you should be more careful. It could have ended very badly. They need to be very carefully handled and cleaned from dust. Otherwise, they will rebel. You'll end up like one of my students. Gabriel. A broom beat her to death after she dropped it on the floor right into an ugly spider's web. Oh, Jesus. Talking hats? Killing killer brooms? The magic of the house seemed no longer funny to me. I turned pale with horror and looked around cautiously. A pumpkin over the door. What if it bit someone's head off? And these pictures. I mean, they take the souls looking at them. And this terrible carpet. How many innocent children did it tear to pieces with its fangs? For a second, it seemed to me that I wasn't in my, mouth, in my aunt's house, but deep in the forest in some hut, packed with the living dead. Brrr. I should have watched horror movies at night. Thomas, I guess I scared you a little. Of course, poor thing. What an unavoidable end. It's more dangerous here than it might seem at first glance. Honestly, it's more dangerous here than in the dark forest along with hungry wolves. That's why I need you to be careful well and be an obedient boy. I'll be very obedient. Of course I would. My life depends on it. 